Here we go. So what I want to do is talk about the definitions of trigonometric functions of any angle. So a lot of times we talk about angles, you know, we said what's the sine of 30 degrees or the tangent of 6 degrees. And the reason why we use those um, angles is because the trigon to evaluate a trigonometric function at those angles um, we're, we could use by using kind of uh, geometry um, so forth with our special, uh, special triangles, 45, 45, and uh, 30, 60, 90 triangles. So let's go ahead and take a look at, you know, if we have a point or if we have an angle, right? Remember, we, a lot of times we use the unit circle, meaning our radius was always equal to 1. And a lot of times I always talked about when I said, um, you know, whenever your angle is not on the unit circle, we a lot of times we've got to make a triangle for that to be able to determine what our sign and our uh, ratio was. Now, one thing, let's just kind of go back through. And remember in trigonometry, the sine function represented for a triangle the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine represented the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent function represented the opposite over the adjacent. So those are kind of what we dealt with when we looked at a right triangle, um, where right triangle where we had theta, or, and here's our angle theta, and then we had a right triangle. And therefore, from there, we could look at the different side lengths of the triangle and determine the ratio. However, now what we're going to be dealing with, we're going to be dealing with any point or with any angle. And so before, when we looked at, we said, oh, well, what was the unit circle, right? And we said, oh, you know, he had 30 degrees, 90 degrees. And those are all special angles that we could easily evaluate the trigonometric function. But what about if I pick a point that's not on the unit circle, let's say over here. Now remember, this is still going to be a coordinate with an x and a y-axis. So this point is going to have an x comma y-axis. And it's also, we can also draw an angle with this where if I had, here's my initial side, and then here's going to be my terminal side. So therefore, I'm still creating a theta. But now, my radius is not going to be 1. Because remember, if I was looking at the unit circle, well, this is a horrible unit circle. That's even not, I don't even know if I'm making it any better. But, Horrible radius, horrible unit circle. But anyways, remember the unit circle always had a radius of 1. But if I pick a point that's off of the unit circle, I no longer have a radius of 1. The only thing I know is I have an x and a y coordinate. So to look at what those x and y coordinates are, remember the y coordinate is going to be that distance from that point down to my x-axis. And the y, or I'm sorry, the y coordinate would be that distance. And the x coordinate is going to be the distance away from the y-axis. So it's important whenever you're graphing your triangles of for any coordinate, any point, you got to make sure you always draw a vertical line towards your um, x-axis. Therefore, that's going to be your right angle. And then your theta is obviously going to be dealing with your central angle. So you always want your theta to be your central angle. Now, when you have a triangle like this, our trigonometric functions are as, are as, the, are as follows. Just like we would say if we had a point on the unit circle, it's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse of this given triangle. So therefore, for any point, even just on this triangle, for any trigonometric function for a point for any angle, it, and even for angles that are on the unit circle, we can use this ratio. Sine is now going to be y over r. Cosine is equal to x over r. And tangent is going to equal um, sorry, y over x where x and y are going to represent the coordinate points, and r is going to represent your radius. Now, if you don't know what your radius is, we have a right triangle. So therefore, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine what your r is. So you could do x squared plus y squared equals r squared. It's also an important member. We could also use our trigonometric functions, which are the reciprocals of our sine, cosine, and tangent. So the cosine function, or cosecant function, would be r over y. The secant function is going to be r over x. And the cotangent function would be x over y. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the definitions of the trigonometric functions of any angle. Thanks.